All right, so get this. we're going off-grid today. Off-grid solar, that is. You got it. And we're not talking about just like a few panels on a roof. This is the real deal. Yeah, this is pretty amazing. We've got Ed, who's decided to power not one, but two whole buildings entirely off the grid. Two buildings? That's a serious commitment to solar. It is. He's gone all in with 15 kilowatts of solar panels. Wow, 15 kilowatts. That's got to be a lot of panels. Oh, yeah. They're spread out across the roofs of both buildings. And to handle all that power, he's got a 24 kilowatt hour battery for storage. But here's the really cool part. He's using AC coupling. AC coupling. Okay, that's where I start to get a little lost. It sounds complicated, but it's actually a pretty clever way to connect multiple inverters and optimize a system like Ed's. He's got a GrowWatt MIN 5000 TLX inverter handling one array. So that's one of the buildings, I guess. Right, and then a Solus S6 EH1P 11.4K HUS APST inverter managing the other array and the battery. Those are some serious names. Don't worry, we'll break it all down. By the end of this deep dive, you'll be an AC coupling expert. You'll understand why it's such a game changer for setups like Ed's. I'm all ears. But before we get too deep into the technical stuff, let's talk about the bigger picture. This whole off-grid solar movement seems to be gaining a lot of momentum. Why are so many people choosing to ditch the grid these days? Well, there are a few reasons. For some people, it's all about energy independence. They want to be in control of their power supply, not reliant on a utility company. Yeah, that makes sense. Especially with all the grid outages and rising energy costs we've been seeing. Exactly. And then there's the resilience factor. Being off-grid means you're less vulnerable to blackouts. If the grid goes down, your lights stay on. I can definitely see the appeal of that. Plus, there's the whole environmental aspect. Solar power is clean and renewable. Absolutely. For many people, going off-grid is a way to reduce their carbon footprint and contribute to a more sustainable future. So it's like a win-win situation. You get reliable, clean energy, and you're doing something good for the planet. Mm, precisely. And Ed's case is a perfect example of how off-grid living is becoming more attainable and appealing to a wider range of people. Okay, so we've got the why down. Now let's dive into the how. Can we break down Ed's system piece by piece, starting with the GrowWatt inverter you mentioned? What exactly does it do? So the GrowWatt MIN 5000 TLX inverter handles the 5 kilowatt solar array on one of Ed's buildings. 5 kilowatts? Is that like a lot of power? It's a decent sized array, especially for a residential setup. The inverter's job is to convert the DC electricity generated by those solar panels into AC electricity. Ah, uh, so it's of a translator. Solar panels speak DC, but our homes speak AC. A perfect analogy. The GrowWatt inverter acts as the go-between, ensuring that solar energy is converted into a usable format for Ed's appliances and devices. Okay, that makes sense. And what about the other inverter, the Solus? What role does it play in this solar symphony? The Solus S6EH1P 11.4KH US APST inverter is a real workhorse in this setup. Workhorse? It sounds like it's got a lot on its plate. It does. It's responsible for the 10 kilowatt solar array on Ed's other building. So that's double the capacity of the grow watt. And on top of that, it's also the inverter that interacts with the 24 kilowatt hour battery. Whoa. So it's like the main control center for the whole system. It's managing the larger solar array and the battery too. Exactly. And this is where AC coupling comes into play. Uh, okay, now we're getting to the heart of the matter. Right. Instead of combining the DC power from both arrays before conversion, which is how a DC coupled system would work, Ed's AC coupled setup converts the DC power to AC separately using each inverter. Then the AC outputs from both inverters are connected, and they're synchronized to essentially form a mini grid specifically for his two buildings. So it's like each building has its own solar power station, but they're all working together in this coordinated system. Precisely. It's a really elegant way to combine multiple energy sources and maximize efficiency. I can see how that would be a huge advantage, especially if Ed decides to expand his system in the future. Exactly. AC coupling gives you a lot of flexibility to grow your system over time. You can add more panels, more batteries, and even integrate other energy sources down the line, and you don't have to completely redesign the system. That makes a lot of sense. So we've got these two inverters, each converting DC to AC, and then they're synced up to create this mini grid. But how does that actually work? How do they communicate with each other to make sure everything runs smoothly? That's a great question, and it's one of the things that makes AC coupling so fascinating. The Solus inverter, in this case, has this really clever feature called frequency watt shifting. Frequency watt shifting, that sounds pretty technical. It is, but it's basically a way for the Solus inverter to communicate with the grow watt inverter and make sure the battery doesn't get overcharged. Wait, hold on. The inverters are actually talking to each other. 
In a way, yes. Think of it like this. The Solus inverter can subtly adjust the frequency of the AC electricity to send signals to the Growatt inverter. So it's like a secret language they use to coordinate their actions. Exactly. And it's all happening behind the scenes, silently and automatically. That's pretty credible. Yeah. But why is preventing battery overcharging so important? Well, overcharging a battery can damage it, shorten its lifespan, and in some cases, it can even be dangerous. Okay, I definitely don't want a battery explosion in my solar setup. No one does! That's why the Solus inverter acts like a watchful guardian constantly monitoring the battery and making sure it stays healthy and happy. So it's constantly fine-tuning the flow of energy to keep everything in balance. That's a great way to put it. And this delicate dance between the two inverters is one of the key benefits of AC coupling. It ensures that the system operates efficiently and safely, even with multiple energy sources and complex configurations. This is also fascinating. I'm starting to see how Ed's system is like a carefully choreographed ballet of electrons with the inverters acting as the conductors. You're getting it. Yeah. It's all about orchestrating the flow of energy to make the most of those solar resources and keep everything running smoothly. But with a system this complex, there have to be some potential challenges, right? I mean, things don't always go according to plan. You're absolutely right. There are always considerations when dealing with off-grid systems, and we'll dive into those in our next segment. We'll explore potential hurdles like synchronization issues, managing overproduction of solar energy, and the importance of ensuring inverter compatibility. Welcome back. So last time we were talking about Ed and his two inverters and they were like doing this like energy dance to keep his battery happy. Exactly. We were talking about all the pieces fit together, the big picture. Right. But building a system like this it can't be easy, right? Well, there are definitely some things to consider, especially when you've got panels spread across two buildings like Ed does. Yeah. Where do you even start? The first step is making sure the locations for those panels are actually good. Like, you need to think about things like trees or other buildings. Oh, you mean like if they're blocking the sunlight? Right. You want to make sure those panels are getting as much sun as possible throughout the year. So it's not just about finding space. It's about finding the right space. Exactly. And then since we're talking about two buildings, the distance between them matters, too. Oh, yeah. We talked about that. AC coupling is good for longer distances. But, but you still have to think about the wiring and how that affects the signal between the inverters. Like if the signal gets weak, it's like they can't talk to each other as well. Exactly. You need to make sure there's a strong connection. I guess it's like making sure they have good cell service. That's a good way to think about it. And speaking of wiring, one of the nice things about AC coupling is it uses the same kind of wiring that electricians use all the time. Oh, so that probably made things easier for Ed's electrician. Yeah, most likely. It can save some time and money compared to other setups. But of course, safety is always the most important thing. You don't want to mess around with electricity. No, you don't. So making sure everything is installed correctly and meets all the codes and regulations, that's super important. So once everything is all wired up and ready to go, how does Ed actually keep track of how his system is doing? Well, that's where technology comes in handy. Both Growatt and Solus, they have these monitoring systems. Usually it's an app or a website that Ed can use. Oh, so he can just check it on his phone. Yeah, it's pretty cool. He can see how much energy his panels are producing, what his battery levels are. He can even get alerts if there's a problem. It's like having a little window into his solar world. It is, and it gives him a lot of control over his system. So what kind of things should he be keeping an eye on? Like, how does he know if everything is working the way it should. Well, he'll want to check how much energy his panels are making, see if it matches what he expects. Makes sense. And he can also see how well the battery is charging and discharging, if it's holding a charge, things like that. I bet it's really satisfying to see how much energy he's making from the sun. Oh, definitely. And it helps him track how much he's saving on his energy bills too. But even with all that monitoring, you still have to do some regular maintenance. Yeah, like you got to keep things clean and make sure everything is running smoothly. Right, like keeping the inverters up to date. They have software updates just like our phones do. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. They help the inverters run better, fix any problems, sometimes even add new features. So it's like giving the inverters a tune-up. Exactly. And then there's the battery. You got to make sure that's being treated right, too. The battery is like the heart of the whole operation, right? It is. So Ed needs to keep an eye on its health, make sure it's not getting too hot or too cold, things like that. So just like a car, a little TLC goes a long way. It really does. But let's zoom out for a second and think about the big picture. What are the real benefits Ed is getting from all of this, from having this AC coupled system? We talked about flexibility, being able to expand the system. But there's got to be more to it. 
Yeah, like think about reliability. If one of his inverters or one array has a problem, the other one can often keep things running. So it's like having a backup system built right in. Exactly. Which is especially important when you're off grid. You don't want to be left in the dark. You don't. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's the whole energy independence thing. Ed doesn't have to worry about power outages or those rising energy costs. He's got his own little power plant. He does. But, okay, we've talked a lot about Ed's setup. But I'm curious about other ways people could use AC coupling. Like, what other applications are there? Oh, there are tons. Like, okay. think about rural areas or places where it's hard to get power from the grid. Yeah, like maybe a remote cabin or something. Exactly. AC coupling could let people create their own mini grids. They could even share energy with each other. That's cool. Like a little neighborhood power grid. Exactly. And it could also be really helpful in emergencies, like after a natural disaster when the power goes out. Oh, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. You could have portable solar systems that use AC coupling. They can be set up quickly to provide power where it's needed most. I bet that would be a game changer. It would. And as batteries get better and cheaper, I think we're going to see even more creative uses for AC coupling. It's really exciting. It's like the future of energy is becoming more flexible and decentralized. I think so, too. And Ed's story is a great example of what's already possible. OK, so we've talked about the how and the why uh. of AC coupling. We've even explored some pretty cool potential applications. But I got to admit, I think some of our listeners might be feeling a little overwhelmed by all this technical stuff. Yeah, I can understand that. It's a lot to take in all at once. Right. There are all these terms and concepts to wrap your head around. What would you say to someone who's really interested in off-grid solar, but they're feeling a bit intimidated? I'd say don't be afraid to ask questions. There's a ton of information out there. Websites, forums, YouTube videos. There's a whole community of people who are passionate about solar. Exactly. And they're usually really happy to share their knowledge and experience. Plus, there are also professional installers who can help you design and set up a system. So it's about taking it one step at a time, doing your research, yeah. and finding the right support. That's it. Going off-grid can seem like a big challenge, but it's becoming more and more achievable every day. I think Ed would agree with that. Definitely. And with the right knowledge and resources, you can make it happen too. Well said. So as we wrap up our deep dive into Ed's amazing off-grid adventure, what's the main message you want our listeners to take away? So we've spent this whole deep dive with Ed and his awesome off-grid setup. It's inspiring, right? Definitely. I'm feeling ready to ditch the grid myself. Oh. Okay, maybe not quite yet, but I've definitely learned a lot. Me too. It's amazing to see what's possible with a little ingenuity and the right technology. I think the biggest takeaway for me is that off-grid living isn't just for, like, you know, survivalists or super techie people. Right. It's becoming more accessible every day. Exactly. And AC coupling, that seems like it's a big part of that. Yeah, it gives you so much flexibility to customize your system and really make it your own. You could have multiple buildings. You can expand easily. It's like the perfect solution for people who want to be energy independent. It really is. And the fact that it uses standard AC wiring... That's a big plus, too. Yeah, it makes things a lot easier and potentially more affordable for everyone involved. And let's not forget about that frequency watch shifting magic. Oh, yeah, the secret language of the inverters. It's still blowing my mind that they can communicate like that and keep everything running smoothly. It's like they're having their own little conversation behind the scenes. You got it. But even with all this advanced technology, we can't forget about the human element. Right. You still got to do your research, stay on top of maintenance, and maybe reach out to a professional if you need help. It's a team effort, for sure. But the rewards are definitely worth it. I mean, imagine being free from those energy bills and knowing you're generating clean power. And you're not contributing to those harmful emissions. Yeah, it's a win for you and a win for the planet. But okay, we've been focusing on Ed's setup. Are there other ways AC coupling can be used beyond just powering homes? Oh, absolutely. Think about businesses, maybe in remote areas where the grid isn't so reliable. Yeah, that makes sense. Or like real communities that want to be more self-sufficient. Exactly. They could use AC coupling to create their own microgrids and share energy resources. That's a pretty cool idea. It's like taking control of your energy destiny as a community. It is. And I think we'll see even more applications in the future, especially in disaster relief. Oh, yeah, that's a great point. Portable solar systems using AC coupling could be a game changer after natural disasters. They could provide power to hospitals, shelters, all kinds of critical infrastructure. It's really exciting to think about the possibilities. It really is. It feels like AC coupling is playing a big role in this shift towards a more sustainable and resilient energy future. 
And it's not just for the experts anymore. Anyone can learn about it, explore the options, and find the solution that's right for them. Well said. This has been an incredibly insightful deep dive. It has been. We've covered so much ground. We have. From the nuts and bolts of AC coupling. Yeah. To the finer points of monitoring and maintenance. Absolutely. What are some key takeaways? Okay, key takeaways. You'd like to leave our listener with. First and foremost, off-grid living is more achievable than ever before. That's great. With the right technology and a bit of planning, yeah, you can break free from the grid, embrace clean energy, and enjoy true energy independence. It's empowering. It's sustainable. It is. And it's a whole new way of thinking about power. Exactly. And remember, it's not just about the technology. Right. It's about the mindset. The mindset. It's about taking control of your energy future reducing your impact on the planet and embracing a more resilient lifestyle. This has been an incredible journey. It has. And to our amazing listener who shared their off-grid setup with us. Yes. Thank you for inspiring us and showing us what's possible. Thank you. We hope this deep dive has provided some valuable insights. I hope so. And answered some of your questions. Absolutely. And remember, this is your deep dive. It is. What questions bubbled up for you? What sparked your curiosity? Yeah, we want to hear from you. Hit us up on social media or leave a comment below. We're listening. We're always here to keep the conversation going. Always. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning. Keep learning. And keep diving deep. Dive deep.